Anik, you innovated the way premature babies should be managed and you already had a worldwide recognition as such. The name Odik Levin is becoming more known not only in his homeland Estonia, but all over the world. The scientifically proven humane aid system for premature babies developed by Dr. Levin began to spread already in the 1980s and 1990s. In 2000s, the system was recognized with a gold standard of pediatrics all over the world. A professor, a prominent pediatrician, a neonatologist, a humanist, a writer. The list of accomplishments of this respected man is far from complete. He often performs in television, is the author of books, scientific and popular articles. He spreads humane ideas and believes in systems of healthy nutrition. I was lucky to be born in Volga, Estonia. I was planned during the first Estonian Republic and most of my prenatal life progressed during the first Republic of Estonia. But I was born in Soviet Estonia in August. He was born in Volga into a Jewish family. The destiny ahead looked challenging and all but easy. Already in his early years, Odik had to go through and process a lot. All this hardened his will and shaped his character. Life was very complicated. A month after World War II started, my parents took me to Siberia and thanks to this we survived. I must say that only a few of the Jews who stayed survived. Interestingly, those who went to Siberia survived. I was lucky as well. Uh, this is why I can celebrate my 80th anniversary. Adapting to life in Siberia was a great challenge. Not for me, but for my parents, especially for my mother. As far as I remember from the tales my mother told, we were really lucky as the local people were very kind and helped us a lot. But the adaptation was extremely hard. His family returned from Siberia in 1945 and Adik started his studies in an Estonian school. I grew up in Valga. Around the time I was in fifth grade, my parents moved to Parno. I studied in the first secondary school of Parno. I graduated from an Estonian school, but fate took me to Leningrad for further studies. Oh, I must admit that I am a late bloomer. There are people who know already at the age of six who they want to become. I really admire and respect such people. When I graduated from secondary school, I did not know what I wanted to do. My parents always wanted me to go to university, but I did not know which profession to choose. My friends from the Russian school went to study in the Pediatric Institute. When we met at the beach in summer, they invited me to study there. And suddenly it occurred to me that maybe studying pediatrics is for me. The years of studying in Leningrad Pediatric Medical Institute followed which Audik Levin graduated in 1968. Six years of study was a great experience. There were many foreigners in our class, Arabs, Africans, etc. It was the first class that was this multinational. I really learned a lot. I don't remember a single exam for which I would have studied topics according to exam questions. I took the textbook or the monograph and read it from cover to cover thoroughly. Uh, this is why I was never afraid of not knowing something. It would have been logical for Levin to return to his homeland Estonia, but a turn of fate brought Dr. Levin to work in the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic in the city of Uralsk. However, he never lost his ties to Estonia. In Kazakhstan, I really started to understand that my home is in Estonia. If I hadn't been in Kazakhstan, maybe I would have immigrated, as many of my relatives did. When I returned to Estonia, I didn't really feel welcome. Uh, maybe it was because I am very emotional and uh, the readaptation was 
a real challenge for me. However, the feeling I got in Kazakhstan that Estonia is my home was really strong. Uh, it, it was built into my genes. For Laban, the time in Kazakhstan was not only the time for building and polishing his professional skills. It was also the time when he started doing research. In 1974, he defends his doctoral thesis and in 1975, he returns to Estonia. Of course, when I returned to Estonia, at the beginning I was not engaged much except writing some articles. But when we were transferred to the new hospital, I became head of the Department of Neonates and Infants. Then I started to notice that there was something there. In 1979, Audik was proposed to manage the Department of Neonatal and Premature Infant Pathology in the Tallinn Children's Hospital. He accepts, and this is what determines his destiny. The process of integration, the opening of the new hospital here in Mostama. This was an incredible gift of faith. I really appreciate it. I have often said that, yes, maybe I would have been much wealthier. When I visited America, I saw many doctors who even had personal planes. But would I have been as happy as I am here and now? I doubt it. Life, <laughs> it's like a big lottery. At the time, neonatology was far from humane to the child. Dr. Laban thoroughly changes the existing structure. For the first time in the world, and on the territory of the former Soviet Union, the mother-infant unit is created thanks to his efforts. In this unit, a mother could be with her child 24-7. I met Adik in 1979 when the hospital was built. He launched the Department of Neonatal Pathology, and I was one of the doctors invited. Dr. Levin built up his department like a family. I'm sure none of us were there by accident, from nurses to doctors. Adik was still a young man then, but all the nurses, caregivers, and especially elderly kitchen workers called him Pops. Without any irony, we all called him Pops. It must not be forgotten that when Dr. Levin started his revolutionary activities, the whole world and the Soviet Union believed that grown-ups and even the child's own mother may transmit infections that may harm the newborn. There was an order by the Ministry of Health that prescribed a system for infant care. However, Dr. Levin decided to disrupt that system. It was the only unit in the Soviet Union where mothers and children were together. This is why we got visitors from all over the world. But we were not only loved by those who wanted to learn from our experience, but also the local sanitary and epidemiological station. Fathers and grandparents were also allowed into the hospital. Everyone was worried that the sanitary regime was being ignored. However, everything was all right. Mothers could take care of children 24-7. Adik Levin created the school for mothers and babies. Lectures were held each week. The knowledge turned women into mothers. I went to Leningrad, Moscow, Kiev, and uh, saw the departments. I saw how children were crying, and I understood that the presence of a mother probably had a soothing effect. When we opened our unit, then mothers were placed together with neonates with pathologies and premature infants. As I had already had experience with research, I was a candidate of sciences, I understood that our approach had the potential for science. However, at the time, no scientific research on this topic was done in the Soviet Union, nor in Europe. Dr. Levin was convinced that this problem only existed in the Soviet Union. But when he visited Finland and Germany for the first time 10 years later, he saw that these countries were not so different. Even in the West, mothers were separated from neonates or sick children, but for entirely different reasons. Doctors thought that mothers were tired and stressed and needed to have complete rest. I understood that research needed to be done. In 1980, a team was composed that worked, so to say, for the children. 
Another team of specialists worked with mothers as mothers needed help. In a few years, a pan-Soviet experiment grew out of this, which gave us the chance to have some freedom. While the order of the Minister of Healthcare of the USSR did not allow mothers to be with children, our case was an experiment, which could not be banned either. Thanks to this experiment, we could continue our work and I could finish all of my research. I studied the biological contact of a mother and child uh, in other words, the microbiome. I think it was one of the earliest works in the field, as it was not a practice at the time to have mothers and children together 24-7. The results I got were very interesting. In addition to the team that helped the children, Adi Glavin established a team of specialists who dealt with mothers with all kinds of issues, including psychological problems. At the time, I focused on the psychological contact between a mother and a child. One of the main contributors here was psychologist Tatiana Listopad, who was working at our department. Our work was very interesting. For the time, the Estonian experiences were revolutionary. Talon Children's Hospital was visited by all the leading neonatologists and the leaders of healthcare institutions of the Soviet Union. Dr. Laban started getting invitations to give lectures all over the world. This kind of research had not been done elsewhere because our approach and methodology were completely new. A monograph was written on the basis of this research, which was published in 1989. During the Soviet times, the world was locked for me. I couldn't travel, although my relatives invited me to Israel and to America, but I was not given permission to go. When the borders opened, I started to travel. The first time I met you, in 1994, I had read articles about your ideas in the journal Birth, about your concept and idea of extending the umbilical cord after birth. The idea was to not separate mothers and babies needing neonatal care. Your ideas of minimum aggressive therapy minimum contact between sick newborns and medical staff, and maximum contact with mothers have been impressive and influential. Levin's contributions to world research is significant. He had a new approach to neonatal issues, and he contributed a lot to eliminating aggressive medicine. Professor Levin started to be included in the work of international breastfeeding organizations. He addressed the fact that only the problems of breastfeeding healthy children were paid attention to, and that there was no organization that was dealing with sick and premature infants. Dr. Laban started to demand a change in attitude towards sick newborns and premature children. Dr. Laban came up with the term energetic umbilical cord. What is it? It's an energetic connection a maternal circle that surrounds the baby even after the umbilical cord is physically not there anymore. Energetic umbilical cord is a very strong connection between a mother and a child, which lasts for a long time. This is what protects the child against all the troubles of the world and helps medical staff to treat children. When Dr. Levin realized this, he started to protect children and demand that mothers and children would not be separated, that they should be together at the hospital. The World Health Organization and UNICEF have developed the Baby-Friendly Hospital Initiative. The experiences of Dr. Levin also enabled to develop the Initiative for Humane Neonatal Medicine. Adik had a wonderful saying, first comes the child patient, then the parents, and third the medical staff. For us, coming third was a great honor. We were proud of it. As the founder of Humane Neonatal Medicine, Dr. Levin has traveled the world and given lectures in over 30 countries. I was lucky to meet Professor Adik Levin more than 20 years ago. I was just a beginner neonatologist at that time, and listening to his lectures during the international project, I have learned much more important things than just neonatology. I have learned philosophy. Philosophy that treating baby as the most important person in the hospital and meeting his basic need to be inseparable with his mother. 
Levin defended his doctoral dissertation not as a university student, but while working full-time at the hospital. He practically never left the children and did not delegate his tasks to others. This is an extraordinary achievement. He was the second person in Estonia to get a PhD in pediatrics. He defended his thesis in Moscow Research Institute of Pediatrics. Two top American pediatricians of the time, Marshall Kloss and John Kennel, wrote in 1999 that Audik Laban had managed to lay the foundation for true innovation during the Soviet era. The first person to address this problem in his publications internationally was Professor Marshall Klaus. When he visited me in Tallinn in 1991 and saw our department, he hugged me in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. and said, do you understand what you have done here? And I answered, yes, I do understand. Then he invited me to the U.S. He was the one who really supported me a lot. Thanks to their help in many international presentations, in 1999 the world's leading journal, Acta Pediatrica, published Adik Laban's articles. From this moment on, his name became world-renowned and his approach to newborns started to spread all over the world. November 2001, we invited him to our National Pediatric Congress with more than 1,500 people. In that meeting, we made a declaration for protect the rights of newborns, especially pretend babies, the breastfeeding, and the mother and father rights. We send this declaration to many countries in the world. Most of them answer and submit this. After retiring, Audik Levin continued his communication with pediatricians from different countries. In 2010, Shu Li, a neonatologist, Professor of Pediatrics and Director of the Maternal Infant Research Center from Canada visited the Mother Infant Unit of Audik Levin. Based on what he saw in Tallinn, he got funding for a three-year research project. Starting from 2011, research based on Levin's system was conducted in 25 hospitals in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. So first of all, uh, Audik Levin is a pioneer. You know, he uh, was faced with a difficult situation in the Soviet Union where there was inadequate staffing and resources. And he uh, very wisely decided to bring the parents into the NICU. And over a many year period showed that in fact, this was very effective. And uh, so when I came to visit Dr. Levine, I realized that he had done something that was tremendously important for the rest of the world. And, you know, we, I think in Western medicine, have gone the wrong way in thinking that parents uh, are not, cannot be as good as professionals. In fact, the parents are the right people to look after their team. And that was the insight that Adik Levine had. And so much credit to Adik, uh, Adik for doing that. And so we took his principles and adapted it for the Canadian context, because Canadian society and health systems are different. And we showed that it can work in Canada. And now we have shown that it works in the United Kingdom, in the USA, in Europe, in many parts, in China, in India, in many parts of the world. And so this is rapidly being recognized now as the gold standard. In 2016 in Baltimore, during the plenary session of the American Academy of Pediatrics, this system was recognized as the world's gold standard. It is noteworthy that Laban proved his system scientifically already in 1991 in his doctoral thesis. At the time, the world had a condescending attitude towards the medicine of Soviet Union, and Laban's thesis written in Cyrillic script was difficult to access for the rest of the world. This is why the recognition of the gold standard came 30 years later. I initially sent the article to Acta Pediatrica. I was asked to rewrite it three times, and I got nine negative reviews. But in reality, I did not change anything. And finally, seven years later, the article was published. For me, personally, this article is very precious and important, as it represents a new paradigm in neonatal medicine. I believe that what we described and offered to the world at that time was about 30 years ahead of our time. 
years. Indeed, the Soviet Union started opening departments for premature babies and their mothers already at the end of the 1980s. This happened because Levin's system that was developed at Talon Children's Hospital was published as a book. Thanks to his doctoral thesis, the system was also scientifically proven. Thanks to Levin's work, the countries of the former Soviet Union are far ahead of Western countries when it comes to neonatal medicine and humane approach to premature children. He is a very interesting person. He is intelligent and responsible. I can speak about any topic with him, especially about medicine. He always offers advice and help. He is extremely versatile and interesting. The Republic of Estonia has always been innovative in terms of neonatal medicine. Tallinn is probably the only capital city in Europe, and maybe also in the world, where in all medical institutions, i.e. in maternity hospitals and in the children's hospital, mothers and fathers can stay with their premature children 24-7. In 2015, on Children's Day, Audik Levin was given the Lifetime Achievement Award for protecting the health, welfare, and rights of children. In addition, Dr. Levin was awarded the title Favorite of Children and Youth. The President of Estonia has awarded Levin the First Class Order of the Estonian Red Cross. In addition to this, Odik Levin also has the title Honorary Citizen of Tallinn. Today, Levin's 11 rules for the humane care of premature children are followed in various neonatal departments all over the world. Throughout centuries, philosophers, representatives of various confessions and great leaders have tried to find the formula for happiness, a suitable concept on how to make people happy. I think that Adik Levin is one who has accomplished this. He knew the answer, and he managed to build a scientific base for his idea that the greatest cure is love, in particular, the love of a mother towards her child. He came up with this idea, he proved it, and this was his gift to the world. The year 2020 is an anniversary year for Dr. Levin. Adik celebrates his 80th birthday. To this day, he clearly expresses and defends his views and principles. He is active, witty, and attentive to the world and continues his life's work. Despite his respectable age, he is still professionally active. He writes books, gives presentations, and expresses his opinion as an individual who has a long-term experience in the system. All this shows that he has strong character. Fate took me to the second children's hospital in Tallinn, and after that to the new Tallinn children's hospital. I was really lucky that I found my way and was able to introduce my ideas worldwide that found support. I think this is great. Of course, you need to have character. You need to know how to prove your truth and express your opinions when it is necessary. I am sure I succeeded in this. To say that I am unhappy would be extremely unethical. To the contrary, I think that I am a happy person.